Hi, this is Mr. Barn, and today we're going to talk about how influential are movies on you. Let's move on. We have two objectives today. Well, actually, we have an objective and a central question. Let me rephrase that. Um, we have an objective today for students to be able to articulate the basics of movie evaluation, which means that to talk about that, you need to talk about why movies are influential on in you and how to express my opinion on a film. What influences you? Is it operas? Probably doubtful for you guys, but maybe for older people. Is it ballets? Maybe not. Is it concerts? Now we're probably hitting a little closer to home. Is it sports? For many of you, probably. Is it dances? Probably for a lot of you. Is it books? Maybe. Is it social media? Almost definitely. Is it family? Also almost definitely. Is it work? Most likely. Is it friends? Almost 100%. Is it current events? Probably. Is it magazines? Probably not as much as it used to be. Is it your neighborhood? Almost definitely. Is it television? Probably also not as much as it used to be because a lot of you don't watch as much television anymore. Is it cultural events? How about movies? How many movies do you think you watch a year? A lot of people watch between 10 and 50. Why do we watch movies? Well, entertainment, escape, enjoyment, catharsis. By the way, if you don't know what catharsis is, that's to experience a negative emotion in a safe way. So, you know, like fear. You're, you're afraid in a horror movie, but you don't actually, you're not actually in danger. Imagination, projection of adventure, romance. Why do we watch film? Well, it's not because they're classics. As uh, Mark Twain say, a classic is someone that everybody wants to have read and nobody wants to read. And the same is true with movies. Classic movies, everybody wants to talk about how they've seen them, but very few people actually want to watch them. Why do we watch movies? Sometimes it's for feeling missing out. Everybody else is talking about it, so I'm going to go watch it. Social validation. Cultural capital. Cultural capital is the idea that you have, you're a person with influence and has the right taste in your area of friends. Keeping up with the Joneses. Everybody else watches it, so I don't I. Or maybe reviews told us it was good. Whenever we do a movie, though, I suggest doing this. Taking, if you're asked to write about a movie, take, it, take out a piece of paper, divide it in the four quarters. Plot, characters, visual, sound, and music. These are the four basic elements of a movie. You could like parts of it and not others, particularly when you break it down this way. Take notice. How does a movie make you feel? What do you like or dislike about it? And... Take specifics now. No one cares that you just dislike a movie. They care why you dislike a movie. Dig deeper. What are the messages? What are the intended messages and the unintended messages? Who was the original audience for the movie? Is Was it you? <laughs> you know, if, if a movie's made in the 1940s, probably not. What are the visual languages being used? What are connections and reassociations? Some of which are intended and some of which are not. Is it possible for a film to surprise or touch us still? Have we become to synthesize what good and evil is through film? Look at these headlines. Five ways that you don't realize movies are controlling your brain. Watching movies does make people more aggressive, study shows. Watching violent movies. Horror films are bad for your health, according to some scientists. Can too much TV in childhood cause adult antisocial behavior? Superhero films are bad for democracy. Now... For every one of those things you see like that, there are plenty of studies actually that say the opposite thing. So how do you make your decision? Well, you form an opinion based on your experience and, you know, then you supply evidence and then you evaluate the quality, the messages, the representation of the audience. And sometimes you might think, for example, that you enjoyed the movie, but that it is not good. Maybe you enjoyed it for reasons that are not good for you. Maybe you think it's really enjoyable because it has a personal meaning to you. But it's just objectively not a good movie. You know, I have many movies I love that I think actually aren't very good. Right. 
the famous film critic Roger Ebert, who died a few years ago, says it's important to know why you hold an opinion and to understand that it emerged from a universe of all your opinions. There is no correct answer. There's simply a correct process. And so, like I said, you can feel any way about a movie, but you need to be able to tell me why. Why do you feel that way? What's the process that led you to it? Elements of evaluation. Lenses. Critical approaches, and there are a bunch. And um, we will go into this later. Film elements, ratings, how it affected you, reviews, Goethe has three questions. I know it looks like Goth, but it's, it's German as Goethe. What would I ask if I were in Mr. Barnes' class? I actually go with Goethe's three questions. What is the IRS trying to do? How well did they do it? And was it worth doing? Whose views and opinions do you usually seek in regards to a movie? A good professional view does not tell you not whether you should like a movie, but allows you to see the film through someone else's eyes. You might disagree with the reviewer, but it's still good to read it. 